Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Also, the link to get a hold of me, either for medical treatment or coaching, is in the description box. It's one tag for all my links. It's a link tree. The top option is just to talk and help me triage what type of care you need. If you know you want blood work or medical treatment, go to the third option. That's Fusion Regenerative Therapy. That's the practice I work at. And then if you want coaching, it's the Apex Coaching tab. Thank you. Have a great day. Hopefully you found this video helpful. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. I'd like to talk to you today about Ozempic or Wagovi. So Ozempic or Wagovi are GLP-1 agonists. It's the same drug that Ozempic is marketed for diabetics. It was found that the diabetics lost a lot of body fat. So Wegovy is the other version marketed towards normal people who just want to lose fat. Both are prescription medications. Both are available. Um, I have not helped anyone as of yet with these, but I'm not opposed to it. That the way that these work is they're GLP-1 agonists. What does that mean? It's glucagon-like peptide 1. And it's an agonist, so it's a synthetic version of a hormone in your body, GLP-1. And what does GLP-1 do? So when you eat carbohydrates, if they're fast-digesting carbohydrates, they will break down and bind to something called a K-cell in the intestines which releases GIP. This is not good. And then, or if it's a complex carb, it breaks down slower and it binds to an L cell and it releases GLP-1, which is better. GLP-1 does a bunch of things. The reason why it's used for treating diabetes is it binds to the beta cells in the pancreas and induces insulin release. It's different than, of course, just injecting insulin because it doesn't just pump out insulin arbitrarily, it's the insulin that's released is due to the ingestion of carbohydrates. So it upregulates how much insulin you get per carbohydrate you eat. You'll find that something similar is the drug metformin. This isn't a GLP-1 agonist, it is a receptor sensitizer. So these two drugs work synergistically, that the Ozempic and metformin would work synergistically to get the more magnet, like a greater magnitude, a greater synergy, more insulin is released in regards to glucose absorption. Um, this is not why people are so, why this drug is so popular. This drug is popular because celebrities are using it to cut corners and not pay the price of their hedonistic lifestyle. That very many celebrities are using this drug to get around the consequences of their actions. And that's very popular and it's glamorous and it's glamorized by these attractive rich people doing something. The subconscious implication is that if you avoid the consequences of your action and take the quick and easy way, you will also be rich, beautiful, and glamorous. And that is not the case. So I want to discourage you from following in the footsteps of celebrities and just understand the science of it. The reason why people are benefiting from this drug is because it, like GLP-1, binds in the brain and decreases appetite. It does through, through different mechanisms. It slows down digestion, so it would also increase appetite that, decrease appetite that way. And um, there's supposed to be a counter-regulatory effect between GLP-1 and GIP. GIP induces hunger and GLP-1 reduces hunger and appetite specifically. There's a difference between appetite and hunger. Hunger is response to the need of food. Appetite is the desire for taste. So the longer you go hungry, the greater your appetite's going to grow. And the more likely when you do eat, you're going to eat something crappy, which is usually mixing carbs and fats together, like fried foods dipped in sugar, like a sugar fried Oreo. A deep fried Oreo would be a good example of something that appetite would drive you to eat, whereas if you're just hungry, then you're thinking about steak and vegetables because that's filling. So 
the reason why people would take this drug is because they want to decrease their appetite and increase the amount of satiety, satiety that they get from their foods. So what are the reasons not to take it? Well, if someone eats like shit, this will be really beneficial for them, unfortunately. It'll help someone who has a shit diet, who eats sugar and fatty foods for the most part, because then they're not going to want to eat as much, so they'll get less fat as fast, or they might even lose fat. Now, nausea is the number one side effect of this drug because it slows down your digestion, so if you're eating like shit, then you're going to have that shit piling up in you for longer, and you're digestive tract is going to react negatively. So fatty foods, in particular spicy foods, your body doesn't like those. If you were to be eating clean, then you probably wouldn't need the drug in the first place, but clean foods don't induce this type of GI distress. So also when these people go off the drug because they never change their eating habits, they gain all the fat back. So that's not good either. So this is not something that helps someone who's doing things right lose fat. These, this is a band-aid to cover up a shitty lifestyle and a hedonistic behavior pattern, removing all accountability and responsibility for one's behavior, which is great in Los Angeles, but it's not really going to be very helpful if you're a competitor and you wouldn't be watching this channel if you weren't probably. So where does this have its application in contest prep? The application in contest prep is quite simple. If you're at the end of prep, and you're super fucking hungry and you can't sleep at night, then now the hunger is maladaptive and is tapping into your sleep, and sleep is very important for fat loss. That's when balancing uh, metformin with Ozempic or Wegovy would be the correct way to mitigate that hunger to make it more manageable that you stick to your diet without cheating or to get through a whole night's sleep. Now, are there any real medical consequences of this? So theoretically, it can cause medullary thyroid cancer. Well, how can it do this? I believe it decreases thyroid binding globulin, which would, I don't know if that's a direct thing or whatever. The point is this only happened in rats, and what they don't tell you is that rats always get cancer. So the fact that it gives a bunch of cancer rats cancer isn't this big of a deal. It's that it's that they all got the same cancer, and it's kind of the uncommon cancer. It's not the papillary cancer, which is 90% of thyroid cancers. It's the medullary cancer. So that's kind of weird. That's something to be concerned with, I suppose. But it's never happened in humans. The other concern is it can cause pancreatitis, I suppose. But that's just because it's going to upregulate beta cell activity. So you could, in theory, have such an increase in insulin in some genetically predisposed person that it would, might cause inflammation of the pancreas. I don't think... I think it's happened in one case. Um, as far as... Other problems is supposedly the manufacturer says that the people that it was tested on had lower back pain and increased their risk of diabetic retinopathy. Well, it was tested on diabetics. So whether diabetics had a higher percentage, it doesn't say how much, of diabetic retinopathy has no bearing on people that are either not diabetic do not have diabetic retinopathy or are not diabetics. It's not like it's going to give a non-diabetic diabetic retinopathy. Um, it also supposedly causes back pain, but it's like back pain is such a whiny symptom that could be from a thousand different things. It could be simply the fact that a super fat person's less super fat, so they stand up and now their back hurts. And I know that that sounds really um, condescending or disrespectful, but literally that's how bad the side effect reporting is, that they have to report every fucking side effect anyone has ever said. That's why every drug has nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and they're contradictory. It's because every... So that ran out of space. So this is the bottom line. I was at the end of the video anyway. Just make sure to like and subscribe to this. Share it with people that you like. Share it with people you don't like. Share it with somebody who doesn't know they're fat and just fuck with their life. And just be like, oh my God, why is he sharing this with me? Am I fat? Share it with really skinny people that you don't like who might think that they're fat just to ruin their life. Um, also, if you want help, get a hold of me. The description, I mean, there's a tag for Linktree in the description box. 
and that's all of my my links. So it's one link to get a landing page with a bunch of links, kind of like the um, OnlyFans girls do on their Instagram. Only it's not Instagram, it's YouTube, and I'm not an OnlyFans girl. Anyway, have a good one.